بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير تمارين exercises حول means to change and this is فعل الأمر and this is ساكن and after that we have ال so we know that whenever we have ساكن and when we want to connect it with ال we connect it with كسرة حول المبتدأ في كل من الجمل الآتية إلى جمعي So now what we have to do change the subject of the following sentences into plural as shown in the example مثال the example هذا طالب this is a student and uh, now we have to change the subject and subject is هذا and we have to change it into هؤلاء So now we know that if the subject is plural and then the predicate has to be plural as well. So هؤلاء is plural and then that's why we have طلاب and these are students. So here in the brackets, we have the plural here already. So طالب and the plural of طالب is طلاب and here you can see we have the pattern of the noun of, of or we can say الجمع المكسر, the broken plural. So there are different patterns. So this is pattern number one that we are learning over here. And this is called فعالن. So whenever you make plural, uh, the noun will, will be on the same pattern. Uh, then we have هذا تاجر. This is a merchant. And uh, when we change it هذا into هؤلاء and تاجر, we will change it into تجار. So it will be هؤلاء تجار. These are merchants. So now you see here, تجار فعال Similarly, we have طلاب فعال So the noun will be always, the, the broken plural will always follow a pattern. So if we know the pattern, then it's very easy to make uh, the, the, the plural. Then we have هذا حاج uh, This is a pilgrim and we want to say these are pilgrims. So we will say هؤلاء حجاج حجاج So now we can see over here طلاب تجار and حجاج all of them are on the pattern of فعال so this is pattern number one then we have pattern number two which is فعال فعال as we can see over here so هذا رجل and this is a man and we want to say these are men so we will say هؤلاء رجال these are men so basically what we have to do, the subject, we have to make it plural. So subject is hada, and we have learned in the previous uh, lesson that the plural of hada is haulai. So it will be haulai rijalun, these are men. Hada kabirun, uh, this is big, and then we will say haulai kibarun. So kibarun also we can say, and these are senior. So kibarun is also used for senior. So we will say these are senior. Hada sagirun. This is this is young or this is small, and then we say ha ulai sigarun. These are young, or we can say these are young men. It depends, like on the context, uh, like what we are talking about. So if we know the context, for example, ha ulai rijalun, ha ulai kibarun, and this similarly we have ha ulai sigarun. هؤلاء الطلاب we can say or هؤلاء الأطفال صغار so what will be the difference if I say هؤلاء صغار and if I say هؤلاء الأطفال صغار هؤلاء الأطفال so after هؤلاء if we have أل that means these right these children صغار are young so when we say هؤلاء الأطفال صغار that means these children are young but when we say هؤلاء صغار this is the complete sentence. Do you remember that? It's a complete sentence. Why is it a complete sentence? Because we can see the subject is definite and the predicate is indefinite. So when we have two nouns together, one is definite and one is indefinite, then it becomes a complete sentence. هذا قصير uh, This is short. And then we want to make the plural. We will say هؤلاء قصار These are short. Now you might have noticed that in, in English, we have only one word, which is short, but in Arabic, uh, as we have learned that even for the adjective, we have the plural. In English, we don't have plural for the adjective. We have only plural for the noun, uh, but here we can see that in Arabic, we have the plural for the adjective as well. For example, 
كبير is adjective صغير is adjective قصير is adjective and similarly طويل is adjective so we say big small uh, short and tall in english it will be the same it won't change but in arabic we have to change it similarly we say هذا طويل and this is tall and then we want to say uh, these are tall so how will we say هؤلاء طوال these are tall so now it's basically now it's all about practice and inshallah i'm sure that you will also read and write it and practice it as much as you can and try to memorize the patterns the patterns are very important for example فعالون, and then we have فعالون. the next one here we have the next pattern is أفعالون. so pattern number three that we are learning over here is أفعالون. so هذا ولدن. And this is a boy, and we want to say these are boys. So how will we say? Ha ulai auladun. These are boys. Ha ulai auladun. Ha the bnu or ha the ibnun. Basically, yeah. And this is a son, and we want to say these are sons. So how will we say? Ha ulai abnaun. Ha ulai abnaun. Then we have ha the ammun. This is uncle, and ammun is paternal uncle. And we want to say these are uncles or paternal uncles. So we will say ha ulai a'mamun. A'mamun as we can see over here. So now alhamdulillah learning plural, learning different patterns. And uh, it will definitely inshallah help us with the passage of time uh, uh, about how to memorize the patterns and also how to memorize the plural as well. Hada uh, shaykhun, this is an old man or this is a learned person. And now the next pattern that we have over here is Fu'ulun, pattern number four is Fu'ulun, so we can see Hada shaykhun, so we will say Ha'ulai shuyukhun Ha'ulai shuyukhun So the pattern, if you see The vowels will not change The vowels will not change Fu'u Then we have Sakin and then we have Tanween Similarly, shu you And then we have Sakin and then we have Tanween So that's what we call the pattern Pattern means that uh, the letters will change, but the vowel signs will not change. They will remain the same. And also we will have the same number of letters. For example, here we have four letters for Ulun, And here we will also have four letters. We cannot change the vowel signs and we cannot change the number of letters. They will be the same. So Fu, Ru, and then we have Wow and Lam. So we have four over here. And similarly, we have Shuyukhun. So we have Shu, and then we have Yu, and then we have Wow is sakin, and then we have kha. So and the letters will change, but the number of letters will not change. Hada uh, daifun. This is a guest. And now we want to say these are guests. So we will say ha ulai dayufun. These are guests. Hada zamilun. This is a classmate. And then the plural pattern number five is very important now. There is a change. Did you notice the change over here? Aulai Zumala U. Yes, did anyone notice the change over here? Here, Auladun, Abnaun, Amamun, Shuyufun, Duyufun, they all end with Tanween. But Fu'la'u, Fu'la'u does not have Tanween. What does that mean? That means any word that comes on this pattern, it will be Mamnu'un min sarf, it will be a diptoth. It will not accept Tanween and it will not accept Kasra. So this is one of the patterns that you can see over here. Fu'la'u. And this is Mamnu min sarf So ha'ulai zumala'u. And these are classmates. Similarly, we have hadha faqirun. And this is poor. And ha'ulai fuqara'u. These are the poor. So now we can see over here that zumala'u and fuqara'u, they are on the pattern of fu'ala'u. And that's why they are Mamnu min sarf then we have pattern number six, which is on the pattern of af'ila'u. So number six is af'ila'u. Okay, so we say hadha ghaniyun, this is rich. And we want to say these are rich. So we will say ha'ula'i aghniya'u, these are rich. Similarly, hadha sadiqun, this is a friend. And when we make the plural, we will say ha'ula'i. Zubala'u means classmates, colleagues and classmates, both of them are possible so it depends on the context hada sadiqun this is a friend and ha ulai asdiqa'u these are friends 
So the plural of sadiqun uh, is asdiqa'u. So this is also the pattern of af'ila'u. Uh, this pattern, as we can see over here, af'ila'u is also mamnu min sarf So it will be af, then ayn has kasra, and then in the end we have hamza with dhamma, af'ila'u. And similarly, we have hadha tabibun, this is a doctor, and ha'ula'i atibba'u, atibba'u. Now you might be thinking that atibba'u is not on the pattern of af'ila'u because we have atibba'u. So what happened over here? Basically it was atbiba'u, atbiba'u. So the ba happened to be there twice. So in Arabic when two letters are the same, what happens? They are merged into one and then atashdeed is placed onto that. So it became, basically it was atbiba'u, atbiba'u but then it changed into atibba'u. So this is also, these are doctors. Next, uh, also very important pattern, which is fi'latun. So we have on this pattern, fi'latun, we have, uh, and this is our pattern number, I guess, seven, yeah. So this is fi'latun, fi'latun. And on this pattern, inshallah, we are going to learn uh, some nouns. So we have hadafatan, uh, this is a young man and haulai fityatun haulai fityatun no uh, the dual has its own pattern there is a question that is this pattern only for the plural or for the dual no the dual does not have any specific like patterns the dual has only one sound the dual will go with the sound so dual and the the sound plural they go by the sound. For example, we say tabibun, and the sound of the dual is ani. So we will say tabibani, sadiqun, sadiqani, ghaniyun, ghaniyani, fatan, and fatayani, akhun, akhwani, jadidun, and jadidani. So the dual is very simple to learn. The dual is always on the pattern of ani, ani, ani. However, we are only focusing on the plural in this lesson. So that's why uh, we are basically discussing the the awzan or the patterns of the plural as we can see over here so hadha fatan this is a young man and haula fityatun and these are young men hadha akhun and this is a brother and then we have haula ikhwatun and these are brothers ikhwatun uh, this plural is basically from if if the number is from 3 to 10 then we use this pattern, fi'latun. Fi'latun is used for the number which is from 3 to 10. For example, ikhwatu Yusuf, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. So ikhwatun is used for from the numbers that are from 3 to 10. And if we have more than 10, then we have the plural which is ikhwanun. So ikhwat, akhun has two plurals. It has two plurals, ikhwatun wa ikhwanun. Ikhwatun is used if the number is 3 or four or up to 10, the number of the persons. But if the number is more than 10, then we use ikhwanun. Hada jadidun, and this is pattern number eight. And as we can see that pattern number eight is fu'ulun. Pattern number eight is what? Fu'ulun. Fu'ulun, so it will be jududun, kutubun. So any word that comes on that pattern will be uh, like this. Hada jadidun, and we will say ha'ula'i. Jududun, haulai, jududun. And these are new as we can see over here. So alhamdulillah, you have learned eight patterns and let me see if we have more, no. So we have learned eight patterns of the broken plural. And inshallah, if you if you are able to write them down and memorize these patterns, uh, that will be inshallah your asset because you will need them all the time. So it's one time investment. You just memorize them only one time. And, and inshallah in the future, you wouldn't need to bother about uh, how to make plural for these words. Now we have sound plurals. Sound plurals are very, very easy to make as we have learned in the previous lesson. Uh, basically, how do we make the sound plural? It basically has dhamma and after dhamma we have una sound. So it becomes una. So for example, hadha mudarrisun and haulai mudarrisuna. And please remember that adjectives, that normally the sound plural is made from the adjectives. It is made from the adjectives. Hadha muhandisun and haulai muhandisuna. So una, as you see, the, look, go by the, by the sound. For the sound plural, we will always go by the sound. For the broken plural, we will always go by the pattern. So two things we need to remember. 
they're the sound plural as the name is over there sound plural so that means we will go by the sound yeah una it will be una ina ina una ina ina and when we talk about the broken plural we know that the broken plural goes by the patrons then we have hada fallahun this is a farmer and haulai fallahuna these are farmers hada mujtahidun this is hard working and haulai mujtahiduna these are hard working then we have hada muslimun this is a muslim and haulai Muslimuna, these are Muslims. Now we have lots of practice. So it's up to you now, inshallah. The more you practice, the more you will improve. Now I have a small gift for you over here. First, we have learned like the categories of the nouns that are mamnu minasarf. For example, we have learned that the names of the prophets are mamnu minasarf, the names of men that end with Tamarbuta, Similarly, the names of men that end with Alif Noon. Similarly, the names of women, name of, names of countries and cities. We have learned, I have given you all the categories of the nouns that are Mamnuf Minasarf. That means they do not accept the mean. They are diptote. Now here, I'm giving you uh, six very, very important patterns. And inshallah, uh, that these are the patterns that have been used a lot in the Quran or in Arabic language. And I'm sure that these are the only six patterns that have been used, but however, there is a possibility that there be there might be some other patterns as well. But these are very, very important six patterns that we can see over here. And if you can memorize these patterns, inshallah, your Arabic, half of the Arabic is clear then. Because this one, as we say, Mamnu min surf or diptot, this is a very, very important topic in Arabic language. And I have told you earlier, and I'm telling you again, that this is the top, the last topic of Medina book number three. But inshallah, I'm sure that by now you have almost covered 85% of the topic already. Or in fact, 90% inshallah, you have already covered. All right, so, um, okay. So, Af'alu, on this pattern, for example, we have Akbaru, Asgharu. Similarly, we have Ahsanu, Afdalu, Awalu, Akharu. So any word that comes on this pattern, Af'alu, it will be Mamnu min sarf It will be a diptot. It will not accept the mean. Okay, basically what is Mamnu min sarf It means that a noun does not accept the mean. It, For example, we say Muhammad. We say Muhammadun, Muhammadan, Muhammadin. So it has three states and three forms. But if you have the noun on the pattern of Akbaru, for example, we have a noun, for example, Ahmadu, Ahmadu, okay? So now Ahmadu is on the pattern of Af'alu. Now Ahmadu will not accept the mean. that's number one. And number two, it will not accept Kasra. So it will be Ahmadu, Ahmada, Ahmada. But when we say Muhammad, we will say Muhammadun, Muhammadan, Muhammadin. But when we say Ahmad, it will be Ahmadu, Ahmada, Ahmada. So this is a basically a difference between the nouns that are flexible and the nouns that are partially flexible. So pattern number one is Af'alu and on the pattern of Af'alu we have Akbaru, biggest. Uh, then we have Fa'la'u and on the pattern of Fa'la'u we have Safra'u, Sauda'u, Hamra'u, Yellow. So Baqaratun Safra'u as we have in the Quran. So this is pattern number two. Pattern number three is Fu'la'u. And on this pattern, we have learned fuqara'u. Then the pattern number five is af, uh, four, sorry, af'ila'u. And on this pattern, we have learned anbiya'u. And then we have the two patterns, which is mafa'ilu and mafa'ilu. So we have masajidu and masabihu. Mafa'ilu, you know it very well on the pattern of tamarinu, right? So these are the six patterns. If you can take a picture or if you can write them down and keep them like in front of you all the time, so inshallah, these six patterns will definitely make your journey of learning Arabic very, very easy. So these are only six. Af'alu, fa'ala'u, fa'ala'u, af'ala'u, mafa'ilu, and mafa'ilu. Earlier, I have given the, given you, I, I think, like around seven categories of the nouns that are mamnu min asarf. And now you have six patterns, so 13. Inshallah, I'm sure there is, there is nothing more than 13 that we have in the Arabic language. So... This is really, really important for you to memorize it now, these patterns. Is this clear? Any questions? Inshallah, I'm sure this is clear now. 
So uh, we will move on to the exercise, next exercise, which is exercise number two. It says, how will it mufradati change uh, the, the words allati, and you know allati because mufradat is uh, the plural of ghayru aqil, and we know that ghayru aqil is feminine. That's why for this we are using allati. So how will it mufradati allati tahtaha khattun ila jumu'in kama huwa muaddahun fil mithali. So now what we have to do, change the underlined words to plural as explained in the example. So again, it's just basically the practice. Uh, what we have to do now, we have to do practice and inshallah, I'm sure now you're able to do it. Look at the example. Man hadha rajulu huwa hajun. So now basically what we have to do, we have to change the subject and also we have to change the predicate. In the previous example, we only changed subject and the predicate was available. But now we have a sentence, we have a question and we have to answer the question. So we have to make sure that we change all of them into plural. Man rijalu, who are these men? And whom hujjajun, and they are pilgrims. Next is min aina hadha talibu, where is this student from? Who am in al-Hindi, he is from India. So now we want to say, where are these students from? So min aina ha'ula and whom min al Hindi. Please make sure that who I will change into whom. Who I will change into whom because we are talking about many students. Min aina haula ittullabu, whom min al Hindi, they are from India. Aina tajiru al kabiru, where is the big merchant? And now we want to say, where are the big merchants? So, aina tajiru al kabiru, so we will say, aina. Tujaru al kibaru, hum fisuki. Aina tujaru al kibaru, hum fisuki. They are in the market. Aina al madarisu al jadidu. Where is the new teacher? Huwa inda al mudiri. He is with the manager. So you want to say, where are the new teachers? So we will say, Aina al madarisuna al jududu. Hum inda al mudiri. They are with the manager. Aina talibu al jadidu. Where is the new student? Ahuwa fil fasli, is he in the classroom? Uh, there is a question like why Huwa is changing into whom? Look at the question. The question says, Ain al mudarrisuna, where are the teachers? So teachers is plural, right? So for the plural, we have to use whom, isn't it? When you talk about al mudarris, one student, so we say Huwa. For singular, we use Huwa. And for the plural, we use whom. We have learned in the previous lesson, that for the singular we use huwa, for example, we say huwa tajirun, and when we have the plural, we say hum tujarun. Huma is used for two dual. We are not talking about the dual. Please remember that so far our focus is only on the plural, not on the dual. Uh, so that's why we will inshallah only stick to the dual uh, to the plural as we can see over here. So Aina Talibu al Jadidu, where is the new student? Ahuwa fil fasli, is he in the classroom? So now we want to say, where are the new students? Aina tullabu al jududu. Ahum fil fasli, are they in the classroom? So, okay, so aina at tullabu al jududu. Here we have agniyahu, so there's a small typo. La hum fuqarau, no, they are poor. So aina talibu al jadidu, so it will be aina talibu al ghaniyu. And we will say, ahuwa fil fasli, is he in the classroom? So there is a discrepancy. Uh, this is the not, not the answer. So the answer will be Aina Tulabu Al Jududu Ahum Fil Fasli. Ahum Fil Fasli are they in the classroom? And this one should be the answer. So Ahada Talibu Ghaniyun. Is this student rich? La huwa faqirun. So basically that was the answer to this question. So so this is the answer to this question. Is this student rich? No, he is poor. And now we change hada into haulai. Talib we change into tulab and ghaniyun we change it into agniyau. And we can see that this is mamnu min asarf. Huwa faqirun, he is poor. And here we say la hum faqara'u. No, they are the poor. So we can see over here that this is also mamnu minus sarf. Man hadha rajulu? 
huwa dayfun who is this man and the answer is he is a guest now we want to say who are these men and we want to say they are guests so if you look at the translation so the translation will be they are guests so we will say hum dayufun so man haula haula irrijalu hum dayufun man haula irrijalu hum dayufun they are guests li akhun kabirun i have an older brother huwa talibun bil jami'ati he is a student in the university now i want to say i have elder brothers so i will say li ikhwatun kibarun hum tullabun bil jami'ati so akhun will change into ikhwatun kabirun will change into kibarun and huwa will change into hum as as we are changing uh, according to the example we have to make all of these plural as we can see over here Aina sadiquka where is your friend dhahaba ila al maktabi maktabati he went to the library where is your friend he went to the library now we want to say where are your friends and then you will say they went to the library so what will be the answer will it be dhahaba we have learned in the previous uh, lesson that the plural of dhahaba is dhahabu right what's the plural of dhahaba dhahabu excellent so it will be aina asdiqauk where are your friends dhahabu ila al maktabati they went to the library so maktab is office or desk and maktaba mita marbuta is a library muhammadun lahubnu saghirun or in fact lahu ibnu saghirin right he has a uh, he has a small or young son huwa talibun fil madrasati he is a student in a school or in the school so we say muhammadun lahu abna'un sigharun muhammad has young children hum tullabun fil madrasati they are students in the school so muhammadun lahu ibnun sighirun sorry so it will be ibnun sighirun i used it as mudaf mudafila sorry it's not mudaf mudafila it's basically musuf fasifa musuf fasifa so muhammadun lahu ibnun sighirun muhammad has a young son huwa talibun fil madrasati he is a student in the school and now we change ibnun into abna'un and we change saghir into sighirun and similarly we change huwa into hum and similarly when we say huwa talibun and when we change huwa into hum then we have to change talibun into tullabun because we know that the subject and the predicate are equal in number and gender azmiluka mujtahidun na'am huwa mujtahidun uh, is your colleague or your classmate hard working yes he is hard working now you want to say are your colleagues hard working or are your classmates hard working and you say yes they are hard working so what will be the answer azumala'uka mujtahiduna are your classmates hard working na'am yes hum mujtahiduna yes they are hard working now basically it's it's all about practice and and you know that like whatever we have learned we are practicing over here so we don't really have lots of new ideas the ideas we learned in the previous lesson and we are simply uh, implementing those ideas over here that we have learned in the previous lesson question number 3 adif adif al asma'a al atiyata so from here we have the word idafa and idafa means a uh, possessive phrase and that's what we call mudaf mudaf ilayh so adif adif al asma'a al atiyata marratan ila ismin zahirin Uh, one time we have to change them or we have to make them mudaf to the noun that is apparent wa ukhra and the other time ila dhamirin to a prep, to a pronoun kama huwa muwaddahun fil mithali as it is explained in the example so what we have to do make the following nouns mudaf first with the nouns and then with the pronouns as explained in the example now basically what are we supposed to focus on we have to focus on let's look look at the example first mithalun abna'un means sons and then we say abna'u muhammadin uh, the sons of muhammad and here we say abna'uhu his sons abna'uhu his sons now did you notice any change over here 
about Hamza, if you remember in the in the introductory lessons, I told you that Hamza is very delicate and also it's very naughty. So what does that mean? Delicate in the sense that generally it does not come by itself. Here it has come by itself. Itself means it is not, it is not sitting on a chair, but sometimes it needs a chair to sit on that. And you remember the chair of Hamza? Either it sits on Alif or it sits on Wow or it sits on Ya. And I explained earlier that when you put Hamza on Alif and when you put Hamza on Wow and when you put Hamza on Ya, they are not Alif and Wow and Ya anymore. They are called Hamza. So now we will call them Hamza. So please remember now something that we need to notice over here. When a word ends with Hamza, as we can see over here, when we use it as a mudaf to a noun, then there is no need to add anything. There is no need to give a chair to the Hamza. But when the Hamza comes with a pronoun, then it needs a chair. And what is the chair of Hamza over here? It is wow. So we have to insert wow when we are using it with the attached pronoun. So in simple words, with the noun, we don't need to give a chair to the Hamza, but whenever we are connecting it with the pronoun, then we have to give it a chair and the chair should be compatible with Hamza. We know that wow and Dhamma are compatible. So whenever you have Dhamma, then we have to give it Dhamma. So we will basically put wow and then onto that we will add Dhamma, it becomes Abna Uhu. So Dhamma was already there. So what is the change that has taken place over here? Here, the Hamza has taken a chair. Here it came by itself, doesn't need Hamza, it, it doesn't need a chair, but when it came with the attached pronoun, now it needed a chair and the chair that we have over here is kursi as we say in Arabic, and that is wow. So Hamza uses, sometimes it uses alif, and sometimes it uses wow, and sometimes it uses ya as its chairs. So Asma'un and At-Tullabi. So when we say Asma or Tullabi, do we need to provide a chair to the Hamza or not? Does Hamza need a chair when we use it with a noun? No, we don't pronounce the wow. No, we don't pronounce wow. We will only pronounce Hamza because it's not wow anymore. It becomes Hamza. So we will pronounce it as Hamza. So for example, we, if we have Dhamma, it will be U and it will be also U and it will also be U. We will not change the, the, we will not pronounce it in a different way. Okay, so excellent. I have seen many answers. It says Asma Uttullabi, uh, it does not need a chair. But when we want to say their names, Asma Uhum, Asma Uhum, does it need a chair now? Yes, why? Because we are using it with the attached pronoun, excellent. So now we will say Asma Uhum. Look at the pronunciation, the pronunciation will not change. We will not say asma uhum. Don't prolong it for two seconds. La, there is no need to prolong it. We will read it as dhamma. So asma uhum, asma uhum. But the only thing that we need to notice over here is we have to provide it with a chair because Hamza is very delicate. It's the queen, and the queen needs some care, and we are providing the care over here. Zumala u hamidin, and again here we don't need to provide a chair, so it will be zumala u hamidin. Uh, the, the classmates of Hamid, and then we will say Zumala U, Zumala U, Hu, right? Zumala U, Hu. There is a type over here. It cannot be Ka because we know that the pronoun that we will use for Hamid is Hu, right? Hamid for Hamid, we will use Hu. So we will say Zumala U, Hu, his, his classmates. Because here we have Zumala U, Hamidin, right? And the classmates of Hamid. So now the pronoun that we are using, we are using it for Hamid. So we know that for the third person, we have to use who. So we will say, and for the second person, Mukhatab, I will say Zubala Uka. That means your classmates. But are we saying your classmates? Not. We are saying the classmates of Hamid. And we are saying his classmates. So that's why we cannot put Ka over here. We have to put who over here. Asdaqa U al Madarisi. So it will be. Astaqa ul madarrisi, and here we will say Astaqa uhu, Astaqa uhu, his friends, his friends. So Alhamdulillah, it's been lots of practice, and uh, Inshallah, if you if you focus and if we focus a little bit more and we try a little bit Inshallah extra, uh, we will definitely try. We will be able to understand everything Inshallah.
Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.